Hey folks, our mysterious friend at the USGS has struck again, and this time, it kind of changes everything. While there are at least two people at the USGS who are outspokenly unfond of our community, this individual has come to two straight conferences and has helped edit the details of our earthquake prediction model. You might also remember, he is nervous about losing his job and equally concerned over his reputation in the community. You'll understand why in a few minutes. You might remember, it was last year in mid-September, after the magnitude 8 earthquake in Mexico, he referred us back to our 2015 study with Drs. Wu Yen and Holloman, indicating that the earthquake seemed like it would be a fit for our initial timing model based on solar magnetism. Well, this morning, I got another email. In response to the recent changes you see at the bottom of the list of resources top right, the 2018 changes to the model, including the fact that I am now using more than just that model for the risk maps, trying to integrate more and more every day, which is why on the statistics page there is now a stats scoreboard for the initial model on the left, as published, and then on the right my own scoreboard with the new items added as we go day by day. If you look closely, you can see I'm not doing as well as the model laid out 15 months ago. If you will recall from Davidson 2017 or the presentation from the conference, those factors include deep earthquakes called blot echoes and atmospheric signals like low pressure cells and strong outgoing longwave radiation gradients. The impetus was the recent magnitude 7.9 earthquake that struck Alaska this week, which was not on our alert risk map due to other regions dominating our focus, but indeed, there were low-velocity zone earthquakes preceding the large event, which took place with a low-pressure system just astride. While we did not recognize our own model in favor of areas showing more traditional foreshock signals, the model, as laid out, described the pre-seismic conditions both above and below the ground. There is no doubt that while it was a personal failure for me, the words written, typed, and uttered in the past got the hit. That was what the email from our mysterious friend was about. I quote him, Funny that you made a proper revision to your tracking of the model versus personal statistics, but you failed to take it any further, and to the detriment of the model. Then, below that sentence was simply written the words, Top 7. I found this to be especially puzzling. I'm betting I know some third graders who can clearly see we've got two misses in the top seven, and then his words hit me. I made a proper revision separating ego and personal efforts from the published model. That's just good science. But I did fail to take it any further than the magnitude 7.9 that just struck Alaska. Did he spot a mistake I had made months earlier, or more than one? Indeed, he did. Rather than just show you those two misses, we already saw the pre-seismic signals for the 7.9 that just struck Alaska, so let's do the rest of the top seven. The largest earthquake during our forecasting model efforts was the 8.2 in Mexico. This is one of the shallowest low-velocity zone regions at 60 to 70 kilometers deep. One subterranean signal accompanied a powerful termination of three cloud-connected hurricanes just north of the epicenter location. Two other 7.9s hit during the period, both in Papua New Guinea. The first in December 2016 had a preposterous number of deep signals, each shown here. With the migration of the subterranean signals towards the crust in the days just before, while an outgoing longwave radiation anomaly was driven by an isolated high over the large island, rainy conditions around reducing thermal emission, and a nice linear cloud separation along the actual fault line. That is about everything involved in outgoing longwave right there. The other magnitude 7.9 in Papua New Guinea was in January a month later. There was another absurd spate of deep events clustered near the fault and a low-pressure system nearby, which also drove an outgoing longwave anomaly. It was spinning over the fault without any significant cloud moisture to it, which is capitally unusual, especially in the tropics, and which provides less distribution medium to slow down the global electric circuit. This is why Dr. Uyen discusses clouds and rain as diminishing the electrical signals. Coming next to the 7.8 in the Solomon Islands, in the three days prior, a transition zone uptick rose to the low velocity zone before breaking at the crust with the 7.8, with a low pressure system overhead, and the earthquake zone sitting on the line dividing the heavy cloud portion of the circulation from the clear skies half. 
Up next is one of our most famous forecasts, the 7.8 in New Zealand, November 2016. This was preceded by deep signals along the Kermadec and Tongan trenches, and not only was there a powerful low astride, but the pressure squeeze between it and the high to the east in yellow created a strong long-wave gradient right through the fault and eventual epicenter zone. Last in the top 7, a 7.7 .7 off Kamchatka, Russia. One last time, let's see an uptick in deep signals before the big event, and with a strong low pressure situation appearing to dominate the local atmosphere. So what was our mysterious friend saying? When I personally failed to get the 7.7 .7 in Russia and the 7.8 in the Solomon Islands, it was due to a personal failure of mine to follow the published model. To my detriment and in rectifying the personal versus model statistics with this week's Alaskan earthquake, I admit I did not go back through the list and look at the other events. The fact of the matter is, despite the hits to my ego and personal effort, the published model has actually tagged the top seven events and located over 90% of the energy released. This is significantly disappointing in one way, to my efforts to include things like total electron content and standard crustal foreshocks, which is now just over 70% successful in locating that same energetic release. The attempt to expand the model and include more facts has actually proven to fall well short of what we began using in October 2016. Let us thank our mysterious friend once again.